hello Thrivers. Welcome to another day of Thrive Bible Devotions. I'm excited as we get to continue in Galatians uh, beginning in chapter 1 today. Yesterday we did a uh, kind of an overview or a background of the book of Galatians and today we are starting it. This is the Apostle Paul's first book to uh, first first book written right first letter written to any churches um, it is the it is one of the oldest books of the New Testament dating to around 50 AD so I'm uh, very excited to um, be talking about it and um, let's get started shall we uh, let's have a word of prayer and we'll, we'll get cooking uh, Lord we just pray that you uh, help us today to uh, get into your word understand it learn from it um, and apply it into our lives Lord, as we, uh, we go about our day today, help us to focus on you and, and make sure that all we do is what you'd have us to do, Lord. God, and direct us and help us to follow. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, if you got your Bibles, let's go to Galatians. Galatians, chapter number one. And um, if you're wondering, where is, where is Galatians at? You know, in the New Testament, it is Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, and then Galatians. Galatians is six chapters long. It is not a very long book. Um, and we're going to get started here in chapter 1, verse 1. And we're going to read the first 10 verses today. And really, this is the introduction to the letter. And, and from, from there on out, he's really going to get into things. But let's read the first 10 verses, and let's, then let's talk about it and, and think on it, all right? It says here, Paul, an apostle, not from men nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the brothers who are with me, to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave uh, himself for our sins to deliver us from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you to the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you received, let him be accursed. For am I not seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please man? If I were still trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. Uh, and and that is really the introduction to the book. We can break it down into a couple areas real quick. First off is... Um, you know, Paul in the very beginning of this thing, right? Um, he's immediately going to try to, you know, going to kind of let you know that he's going to be establishing his authority, right? Um, at the very first sentence, he says, Paul, an apostle. And yet, remember yesterday's uh, message, right? An apostle is, is a messenger, someone sent on a mission, and Paul was sent on a mission. And that mission was what? Not from men, right? So uh, his mission didn't come from men or through man. You know, not even from God through a man, right? No, it came directly from Jesus Christ. But through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him up from the dead. So Paul is automatically here, right, establishing the fact that he has authority to write this letter. Um, it's really interesting in that uh, in future letters, he's not going to have to do that like quite the same way. As a matter of fact, we're going to see a good portion here of the book of Galatians where Paul is really giving a defense of his authority to write a letter like this. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. Um, interesting things, guys. Uh, Paul was given this mission and a job to do by God, uh, you know, through Jesus Christ. Um, that, is, that is who his boss was. That is who he reported to. That is the one who sent him. And, and you know, when we serve in ministry, right, um, God sends us, but he sends us through man, right? He, he, he calls us through uh, the local church, through the body of believers that, that we are with. Um, so Paul had a little bit different of a, of a, a situation than what we would have. Um, but no matter what, guys, when we are, we are called by God, um, even though it may be through others, 
Um, it is still by God who calls you to minister. Second thing we see here is he says um, in verse 3, grace and peace are wished upon them, right? Are, are you know, uh, given as a blessing towards them, right? He says, your grace and grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, grace, man, what a great word. And, and not everybody always understands it, but... Um, uh, probably the most basic definition of grace is it's basically the the Lord's favor upon you. Um, I love the you know the cross stitch, the, the I don't know what it's called. Um, you know you take every letter and it begin each letter begins a word uh, for grace and and the best one I've heard was God's riches at Christ's expense, uh, and that's what really grace is, right? Um, God giving His Son Jesus Christ. Uh, to give us, to lavish upon us um, all manner of favor and blessings and riches. Paul says, "Grace and peace to you, uh, peace, man. It, you know, it is it is a oneness. It is a quietness. It is rest. Um, it is something that we just don't find naturally in this world. We can rest for a moment, and we can we can stop and try to veg out and and not think of all the the things going on in our lives. But true rest." True peace, true quietness and oneness comes from God the Father. Uh, and, and that's what, you know, both those things, right? Grace and peace truly, in the truest sense, come from God. And without God, you'll never have grace and you'll never truly have peace. Um, it comes from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is only through him that we have this. By the way, this is the same God, right? It says... Um, Peace and grace to you um, from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave also himself for your sins. Uh, so not only has he is he giving you grace and he's giving you peace, but he's already giving you, right, himself on the cross, right, as, as payment uh, for our sin. And that should just excite us. And, and remember, guys, when we don't feel peace in our lives, we don't feel like God's grace is abundant in our lives, uh, and we wonder, does God truly want to give it to us? So stop. Hold on a second. God also showed you that he does because he gave you even more by the death of his son, Jesus Christ, on the cross. Right? It, 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 he's already given much more. And so why not with that grace and peace also come to you? Um Understand this also, guys. He may have given his son Jesus Christ, right? But it says here in verse uh, 4, um, according to the will of our God and Father. Right? So not only was he given, but he was given because God wanted to. Right? I mean, God wanted to give his son. God wanted to give you uh, salvation. God wanted to give you grace. God wants to give you peace and he offers it to you if we just turn to him and trust him uh, James chapter 1 we were just in James and a great verse here in James chapter 1 verse 7 let's go over there real quick um, it says here that um, oh maybe not 7 I'll see here Leave it to me to write down the wrong, remember the wrong reference. I'm sorry, guys. Man, all good gifts come from God, and that's that's what I wanted to show you guys. I just can't find it. Um, so forgive me, please, and we'll go on. Um, you know what? I'm going to put that in the notes below for you guys. Um, the Bible talks about how every good and great gift is coming from God and that he wants to lavish on us gifts uh, like this. And so that's what God, God wanting, he's wanting to do for us. And again, I'll make sure I put that verse in the notes below, all right? Um, so you can, you can find that. Now, as we continue here in, uh, in Galatians... We, so we've seen here that he's establishing, he's going to be establishing his authority, right? He's wishing upon people grace and peace and, and reminding them why they, you know, why God's willing to give that to them. 
And then he kind of gives them to the, the kind of the, the purpose of his writing, right? Um, he, you know, verse 6, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, right? So um, he's just, he's, he's amazed that they're turning to a different gospel, right? Now he makes it clear there's no, there is no other gospel. There really is only one gospel. Jesus Christ died for your sins. And, and if you receive that in faith, right, not works, nothing you could do to, to earn that, and, and you know, you, you have it, right? Um, but somewhere out there, and it says that they, somewhere out there distorting it, right? Verse 7. But there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. And that was true then. It is true today, guys. It is why it is so important for us to learn good doctrine, to understand our Bibles, uh, to look at the world through the lens of God, through his word. Uh, and when we do that, guys, we can see um, the, the, the lies. And the thing is, when lies play into things like the gospel, right, it, it changes how we think, it changes how we react, it changes how we, we view the rest of the world. It, it changes our worldview. Uh, and so, you know, here they were, and, and they were in Galatia, and they had received Christ, right? They had received the good news, and there are others coming in, following after them, and, and telling them, no, you can't, you can't uh, be a Christian, you can't be a follower of Jesus, unless you're willing to get circumcised, unless you're willing to obey these laws, unless you're willing to, you know, follow all these rules and regulations. And, and that was a lie. It was the first lie, really, to the church, and and I'm saying trying to distort the gospel. Uh, man, even this life still today applies, right? How many times have you talked to someone about, about Jesus, someone who doesn't know him, and they're like, I'm not sure I can trust Jesus because I'm not ready to do all these rules and live all you know this way. And, and that's legalism coming in, right? Hey, trust Jesus, but you know what? You have to do this, or you need to do that, or you need to act like this. And that's just not what the Bible says. It's distorting the gospel. And then he's very clear. He says, basically, if anyone's preaching to you another gospel, they should be cursed, right? They should be cursed. It, it is an awful thing. He does not want it to happen. Um, and, and then he comes on to say, basically, listen, we're not here to um, have approval from man, right? They may come up here and they're, they're, they're trying to get you to do all these rules because they want, um, and they want you know, and you, and you feel like you need to, you know, do what they want you to do because you want to be approved by them. You want to, you want to make them happy. But God, but He's saying, no, it's better to please God, right? We should desire to um, do what God wants as opposed to what man wants. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's what He says here in verse ten. He says, "For am I now seeking the approval of man or of God, or am I trying to please man? If I were tr still trying to please man." I would not be a servant of Christ. Listen to Paul said, if I still was trying to please man, I would not be a servant of Christ. And that's what Paul was doing in his zeal when he persecuted the church of God, right? He wanted the approval. He wanted the position. He wanted the, the, the reputation that came with being a, a Jew of the Jews. You know, someone, you know, uh, being taught by Gamaliel, someone there that is with the, the high priest knows who he is, and the, the Sanhedrin knows who he is, and he's out there leading the persecution. Uh, he wants the approval of man. And guys, if we're doing our living our lives trying to get the approval of man, we're missing the picture, right? We are not understanding. We are not looking through the, the, the lens of the gospel because uh, approve, being approved by man should mean nothing to us but the approval of God. We want God's approval, and that, that needs to be the primary thing in our life. So when you're with your friends, right, you're with your co-workers, you're with these people, and they're, they're trying to get you to act a certain way, to be more like them, you know, and, and you know, they're, they're trying to do that, and you sit there, you want to be liked, and you want to, um, you know, get along with these people, and you want to fit in with these people, you need to stop and think, wait a second. Am I doing what God wants me to do or am I doing what they want me to do? Am I seeking God's approval or am I seeking their approval? And you know what? If you're seeking their approval, you've got it wrong. Plain and simple. All right, guys. That's the introduction to the book of Galatians. Tomorrow we start at verse 11. Look forward to it. God bless you all. We'll see you tomorrow.